Back in September, we witnessed one of the most epic battles in the history of contact sports. This fight was bigger than Tyson Holyfield. It was bigger than McGregor and Khabib in the UFC. Mayweather Pacquiao, Mayweather McGregor. This was the biggest fight the country had ever seen. It was a war of the woke between Captain Stephen A. Smith and Private First Class Terrell Owens. Back in September, there was division in the ranks in the woke army. Terrell Owens, he was challenging the leadership of Stephen a. Smith. He lands a knockout punch in the first round by claiming that the only reason Stephen A. Smith had Max Kellerman fired from first take was because Max Kellerman had more in common with the black community than Stephen A. Smith did. Now, this devastating blow, it had Stephen A. Smith knocked flat on his ass. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to respond. This was an act of treason at the highest level. Terrell Owens, he was taking the side of the white man. Once he gathered his bearings after being hit with a devastating TKO in the first round, Stephen A. Smith, he finally developed his response. It was a threat. Stephen A. threatened to expose Terrell Owens to the world. He threatened to show non-believers. He threatened to show normal people who Terrell Owens really is. What information did he have? What behind-the-scenes gossip was Stephen A. Smith going to expose about Terrell Owens? Unfortunately, we will never know, but after watching this interview with Jason Lee, maybe Stephen A. Smith was going to expose Terrell Owens as being an uneducated ass. Well, KC, who in the hell's Jason Lee? I had actually forgotten about Jason Lee. Only reason I had ever heard of him before, he used to appear on Love and Hip Hop like, I don't know, 10 years ago? If I remember correctly, Jason Lee, he used to own or he used to run a site called Hollywood Unlocked. Now it appears like he's hosting something called The Jason Lee Show. Very original, very creative title. The most recent guest on the show was none other than Terrell Owens. They discussed all kinds of interesting topics. They talked about real important issues, topics that most people really care about, like who Terrell Owens is dating. Um, who fucking cares? The way white people treated Colin Kaepernick. Um, what? Colleen? Again? Why are we still talking about this doofus? What has Colleen accomplished in the last seven or eight years that would make him a consistent topic of conversation? Nothing. This dude is the poster boy of woke welfare, where you were given millions of dollars for contributing absolutely nothing to society. Last week, I had someone contact me privately claiming that Colin Kaepernick was shopping his autobiography to book publishers. Allegedly, out of the thousands of book publishers in this country, Colin Kaepernick, he could not find a single publisher interested in publishing his autobiography. <laughs> you know, even Jamel Hill was able to find someone to publish a few dozen copies of her memoir on mythical racism. Last I checked, those few dozen copies, they're still available. Now, I was not able to confirm this report about Colin Kaepernick. I don't know if it's true or not, but the point is... He is no longer relevant. Not only that, he has no affiliation with Terrell Owens. So I'm confused as to why in a two-hour conversation with Jason Lee, the only topic that made headlines in the media was their conversation about Colin Kaepernick. Terrell Owens, he was the one that brought it up initially. He brought up Colin Kaepernick. Jason Lee, he then asked him if he thought the decision Colleen made to trade his helmet for a set of knee pads would have sparked the severity of the backlash that Colin Kaepernick received. Listen to this response from Terrell Owens. I never would have thought, yeah, it would have created the firestorm that, that it has. Um, never thought that this guy would never step back on the football field because of that. Um, but it just really shed light on really kind of really how this world works and how really a lot of the white people see us. And for so many years, we've tried to voice that. I mean, for 400 plus something years, we've been telling you this is these are some of the things that have been going on. And it took, like I said, who would have thought that it took a knee to bring all of this back to life? Um, what? Are you serious? Let me make sure I'm understanding this correctly. The biggest thing that Terrell Owens gathered from the backlash with Colin Kaepernick was this is how white people view black people in America? 
Let me go ahead and translate that for you. What Terrell Owens is basically saying, white people are guilty of mythical racism. I never thought Colleen taking a knee would get him banned from the NFL. Well, what did you think was going to happen? NFL ratings declined by 20%. That is unheard of. If ratings in the WNBA declined by 20%, it just means ESPN went from having two people watching the dump back down to zero. That's no big deal. The only reason the WNBA exists is for tax purposes. The IRS gives corporations like the NBA massive tax breaks when they donate to charity. In the NFL, if ratings drop 20%, we are talking about a loss of millions and millions of viewers. Guess what happens when millions of people stop watching your product? Advertisers start complaining. Networks start complaining. Owners are upset because attendance is declining. Billions of dollars in revenue, that is being lost. When you can point to a singular problem as being the cause of this decline, what else can Roger Goodell do here besides eliminate that problem? This narrative from Terrell Owens, it's flawed for so many reasons. For starters, it wasn't only white people who had a problem with Colleen Kaepernick. There were plenty of black people who had the same issue. Believe it or not, the vast majority of Americans do not support kneeling for the national anthem. Not just white people. I'm talking about all Americans. They don't support it. But let's just put the kneeling for the national anthem aside just for a second here. Let's take a moment to educate the uneducated. And when I say the uneducated, I'm talking about Terrell Owens. Years ago, before an NFL game, Colin Kaepernick, he wore socks that depicted cops as being pigs. He wore a t-shirt that honored communist dictator Che Guevara. Colin Kaepernick, he was also supportive of Fidel Castro. Kind of sounds like Colleen is living in the wrong country. I'm sure there are plenty of charters in Miami that would be willing to take him back home to Cuba. We could even call it time travel since going from America to Cuba is like going from 2023 back to 1953. In his Netflix series, which was another example of woke welfare, Colin Kaepernick compared the NFL draft to a slave auction. Now, full transparency here, I have never been to a slave auction. Matter of fact, in my 39 years living in this country, I've never even heard of the existence of a slave auction. But with that being said, I would imagine that people in that auction, they were not being paid millions of dollars for their services. I would also imagine they were not there by choice. Players entering the NFL draft, they are choosing to be there. Colin Kaepernick was not only hated because he kneeled for the national anthem, America rejected Colin Kaepernick because of everything that he pretended to stand for. This dude exploited his own community for his own financial gain. Now, Jason Lee, he followed up with a question about Jay-Z and Rock Nation having the NFL contract to provide entertainment. Now, I thought this was an excellent follow-up question by Jason Lee. As you guys know, the mainstream media narrative with the NFL is, this league is inherently racist! Since the NFL is supposedly infected with mythical racism, Jason Lee asked Terrell Owens what he thought about a supposedly racist league giving their entertainment contract to Jay-Z and Rock Nation. Listen for yourself. Jay-Z partnered with the NFL. Now Rock Nation is kind of responsible for uh, the entertainment. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I don't I don't like that because it's you're addressing it at that time, but where's the where's where's the 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 momentum of what is going on? Where's the continuation of really trying to rectify or bring some type of solution to it? Not just for the moment, you know, we gotta continue this continued work. It's not just for that moment, then you, you address it and it's swept under the rug mm -hmm. after, you know, a few weeks or a couple of months or what have you. And then, like you said, it's back, uh, you know, it's business back to usual. It has to be continued effort to, to rectify some of these things. Um, I have, um, I've listened to that clip several times this morning. For a second, Terrell Owens almost had me convinced that English was my second language. After listening to that clip repeatedly, I still have no idea what the fuck Terrell Owens was talking about. He sounds like a politician. He said a lot without saying a damn thing. Terrell Owens claimed, the NFL needs to rectify the situation. We need to see a continued effort. Um, rectify what? Continued effort in what? 
Are you saying that the NFL needs to give Colin Kaepernick another chance? Yeah, they've already tried that multiple times. The first time, Colleen turned his tryout into a fucking circus. Last summer, the Raiders, they were willing to give him a tryout. In a digital era where everything, I mean everything is filmed, video footage of Colin Kaepernick's tryout with the Raiders never released. Hmm. I wonder why. If I remember correctly, NFL legend Warren Sapp, he called Colin Kaepernick's tryout one of the worst he's ever seen. So what are we supposed to rectify here? What continued effort needs to be given by the NFL? Does Terrell Owens want the NFL to be more active in the fighting its mythical racism? Okay, um, what do you want him to do? Please, Terrell Owens, oh, wise one, let us know what the NFL should be doing here. Three quarters of the league consist of black players. But KC, he was talking about ownership. Terrell Owens claimed that we don't see black owners in the NFL because the white owners won't approve it. Oh, really? I'm so glad we have reincarnation. Confucius has been reborn and his name is Terrell Owens. All this time, I've been wondering why we don't see minority ownership in the NFL. I'm so glad Terrell Owens was able to explain it to me. All those evil white owners are keeping the black owners out of the league. Did you ever think that maybe, just maybe, we haven't seen minority ownership in the NFL because it is prohibitively expensive to purchase an NFL franchise. There's only 17 black billionaires in the world, not America, in the world. There are 320 white billionaires in America alone. Is this really that difficult to understand? In a way, I can kind of understand why Terrell Owens sympathizes with Colin Kaepernick. They do have something in common. Colin Kaepernick was blackballed from the NFL, and when he played in the league, Terrell Owens, he was essentially blackballed for almost every team he played for. Over the years, I have heard some compelling cases against the NFL. There have been some people who's made at least interesting points about the NFL and racism, but unfortunately for Terrell Owens, he ain't one of them. All right. Voting is still open for the upcoming Huge Embarrassing Failure Awards. Last I checked, I think we had received almost a thousand votes for it. Keep the votes coming in. Links in the description below if you want to cast your vote. But in the meantime, give me your thoughts here on Terrell Owens. He claims that Colin Kaepernick highlighted how white people view minorities in America. He also gave a word salad answer when asked how the NFL can be guilty of mythical racism. Make it make sense. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.